and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And uh, big news this week, the Arizona Court of Appeals made a pro-gay ruling and they based it on the Masterpiece Cake Shop decision. As we predicted on this show. So we'll uh, explain it and crow a little. Uh, the Republican United States Senate, however, is continuing to approve anti-LGBT activists for the federal bench and other positions. And we're celebrating Pride around the country and around the world, but after Pride celebrations in Salt Lake City and Queens, New York, there were anti-gay attacks. Very interesting decision in Pennsylvania. A gender non-conforming student bullied from grade school to high school, four different schools, has won a big settlement from the Philadelphia schools for failing to protect her. Uh, uh, judgment in Iowa uh, is ordering the state to pay for transition-related care under Medicaid. If you didn't watch the Tonys, why are you watching this show? <laughs> Nonetheless, for the three of you who didn't see it, we will review the gay moments. And this Sunday, PBS is going to premiere the gay-themed Man in an Orange Shirt on Masterpiece uh, Theater or whatever. And Netflix has released a very funny coming-of-age film, a gay film, Alex Strangelove. By the way, you may notice that we look a little different this week. We are in a different studio because of technical stuff in our facility here, but... Uh, and we're older. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Well, every week. And uh, one of the things we're marking this week, or have marked this week, is the second anniversary of the Pulse Massacre on June 12th. Uh, obviously, a lot of activities down there in Orlando, uh, which we haven't gotten all the news about. But one of the big things that happened was student activists uh, staged a die-in for 12 minutes on Capitol Hill with other events about uh, gun control. They were assisted by the Parkland kids. And I, I was very struck by this quote from one of the young organizers, Acadia Gilchrist. She said, every student activist I've met is extremely driven and it's empowering that we are all leaders right now. She said, it's sad that we have to be, but we all know that it's necessary. And this is the kind of quote that gives me hope uh, for the future and for the elections and everything else is that these young people are so un engaged. Well, I think we're seeing energy in the primary elections and special elections this year, and we'll talk more about that and some of the results this week. Uh, but let's get to some other stuff first. The, really, the prime story this week is a uh, court decision out of Arizona. Now, earlier this month, the big news was the Masterpiece Cake Shop decision at the Supreme Court. And as regular viewers know, we had James Essex of the ACLU here explaining that even though the mainstream media was kissing that off in two sentences as a win for the right wing because the baker didn't have to bake the cake. Although they did describe it as a narrow win, even though... Yeah, but they uh, that was all they said. He won. Uh, but the decision, in fact, had all this language about the need to protect LGBT people from discrimination. Well, it, it, it said a lot of things about that. We wondered how seriously the other courts would take those statements, and it turns out that the Arizona Court of Appeals did. Three seconds later, the Arizona Court, which was the uh, Court of Appeals, uh, in a case of a calligrapher uh, called Brush and Nib, a small shop, which had said explicitly, we do not want to make wedding invitations for same-sex couples, uh, and a same-sex couple challenged that, and the court said, based on the masterpiece decision of the Supreme Court, the gay couple wins. Yes, because again, going back to Masterpiece, what they said, the reason the baker won was because he was mistreated by the Colorado Human Rights Commission who didn't uh, give proper respect to his religious views. 
And there was some debate about whether that was a good idea. But there was so much language in the masterpiece decision about the fact that uh, religious freedom could not trump anti-discrimination laws in public accommodations. Uh, Justice Thomas and Gorsuch are hell-bent on in the future, if, if they can get rid of Kennedy, of changing that. Well, but Roberts and Alito and they did uh, sign on to it. Uh, and Gorsuch uh, signed on to no, it. No, not no. It was a seven to two decision. Gorsuch didn't sign on to it. No, it was Ginsburg and oh. uh, Sotomayor oh, right. okay. who were. Well, he wrote his own dissent. dissent. Uh, Thomas did, uh, uh, but the others uh, signed on with uh, with Kennedy on this language in the decision that said. LGBT non-discrimination laws uh, should be upheld. The so, bottom line is that is that civil rights laws are still intact and are still being applied by the courts. And uh, uh, I mean, it's interesting because this was a calligrapher. Now we don't make printers print books that they don't want to print. Yeah, uh, but what the court said, the Arizona court said, was that this was a commercial sales activity and that if they make wedding invitations for heterosexual couples, they must make wedding invitations for same-sex couples, that it is the same activity, and it is a commercial activity, it is not a religious activity. So you can have all the private religious views you want, and should, and that's fine. But when you are engaging in a public accommodation, a commercial sales activity, you must treat people equally. Right. That's the law. So it's that still, is a big win. Law. It's a big win that affirms the uh, good parts of the masterpiece decision. Okay. Shall we get to our, uh, our Trump news this week? Sure. Well, I mean, the Senate Judiciary Committee advanced Wendy Vitter for the Eastern District of Louisiana. And she could not even say whether she supported Brown v. Board of Education. So that shows you how far we've gone. Gone, And, you know, Ann and I were talking this, about this on the way up. You hear some Republican senators saying how awful Trump is and does terrible things. They never vote against him. They never vote against him. And, and another one, Thomas Farr, is being advanced in the Eastern District of North Carolina, the former counsel for uh, Jesse Helms' Senate campaigns, a total racist. And uh, it's just very, very, these are the people who we're going to be with for the next 20 years. And there is a new oh, head of the Office of Civil Rights uh. in the Department of Education. Ken Marcus, yep. he does not believe that LGBTQ students should be protected from bullying or discrimination in schools. He is the head of the Office of Civil Rights for the Department of Education. Well, I used to work for Bush uh, in that ca 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 some similar capacity. And our Attorney General, uh, still trying to curry favor with the President so he doesn't get fired, uh, it came out with his statement about uh, refining asylum requirements. Yeah. Uh, what he's trying to do is make a distinction that says if you are abused in your home country of El Salvador or whatever, uh, you do not have an automatic right for asylum here. And Well, the, the saying is that the, the abuse has to come from the government, right. not from an individual like your husband or right. your family. But if the thing is, if you have to go back to your hometown or to your country, they're going to find you and kill you. Well... So they have because been taking, the government can't or, protect they're not even they're not even taking gang violence into consideration. It's and certainly LGBTQ people who are fleeing these countries are fleeing them because of things yes. like uh, gang violence. And thanks to Trump, uh, net neutrality died on Monday. Oh, that, this, yeah, that was charming. The Senate has voted to restore it, but the House won't even vote on it. This is, this is why elections have consequences. And for the last half dozen years, the Department of Defense has officially celebrated Pride Month with proclamations and appearances by top uh, uh, brass in the uh, in the Defense Department. But this year, no proclamation from the Defense Department. The LGBTQ employees held a pride event, but uh, no big uh, uh, generals showed up. The, there were pe no big generals. There were some people from the department there. Nobody in the spoke. Audience, but they had right. a, a, trans a couple of transgender speakers, one of whom said that uh, she had considered suicide. Uh, but Jesus saved her, and here she is. Uh, in the military still. Yep. Uh, by the way, uh, the, there, the, the, the Catholic bishops 
uh, are working with Trump. We told you how they, they put a gag rule on abortion, nation, you know, international gag rule on abortion. They want to add contraception to that because Father Sheenan Bouquet told the anti-LGBT CFAM group, the whole abortion industry begins on the foundation of the contraceptive issue. <laughs> Contraception, folks. <laughs> Contraception. Should we move on to Pride? Sure. That'd Maybe nice. we should kick off our Pride coverage with a nice message from the governor of Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a mixed bag of stories on Pride, but uh, I'd like to start on a positive note if we can. Sure. Hi, I'm Governor Tom Wolf. I wanted you to know that I have signed a proclamation making June Pride Month throughout Pennsylvania. As such, I'd like to wish you a happy Pride Month. Pride Month is a great time to recognize the strides the LGBTQ community has made toward equality in the Commonwealth. In 2016, I signed two executive orders to expand protections from discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender expression, or identity for the state employees and for employees of contractors doing business with the Commonwealth. I was also proud to create the first of its kind LGBTQ workgroup that implements policies to further support Pennsylvania's state government. Led by my Secretary of Health, Dr. Rachel Levine, the workgroup is making strides to create a more inclusive state government. I continue to support legislation known as the PA Fairness Act, and I hope you can help bring the bill to my desk for my signature by telling your state legislators to pass it. In addition, I'm working to increase the number of state contracts that go to small, diverse businesses, which include LGBTQ-owned and operated businesses. And as you know, I was the first Pennsylvania governor to host an LGBTQ pride reception at the governor's residence. Since taking office, I have advocated for LGBTQ equality. And as we take part in pride celebrations across the Commonwealth, I would like to wish you a very happy Pride Month. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Yeah, that was really nice. Now, uh, Pennsylvania is still struggling to pass a statewide non-discrimination act, but he's certainly behind that, and uh, it's nice to have a governor stand up and do that. And it's nice to see, of course, we've seen it for decades now, uh, stores putting up rainbow flags, but now in light of the Masterpiece decision, they want to let signal people that everybody's welcome. So we have a picture from the local uh, gym in Chelsea, <laughs> and it's called Soul Cycle, and it says, all souls welcome. <laughs> and there are similar things going up all around the world. Uh, we have to put up signs in Chelsea now to, <laughs> well, to indicate yeah. everybody welcome. Yes, we do. More on that in a second. And HRC put up a pride flag on their building that is the expanded flag with the black and brown stripes mm -hmm. to be more explicitly inclusive. And I thought that was a good thing. The rainbow flag is very flexible. And uh, this is a violent story, but it's also a story of a heroic uh, thing that happened in Salt Lake City. Four gay men uh, ch uh, ch chased, were chased by a mob after Pride uh, uh, to a, uh, a store uh, after, right after the Pride Festival. These, these young men who apparently looked like these blonde, blue-eyed, you know, Mormon types, yelling slurs at them. And the owner, the, the manager of the store, a guy named Terrence Mannery, we have a picture of him. There he's, an, is. he's an employee at the Doki Doki uh, dessert shop. He, he was so fearful of them coming in and uh, going after the gay man and going after his other customers that he came out because he said, I have a lot of experience with this, and he fought them off single-handedly. Mm -hmm. He got punched multiple times. So the police are seeking a suspect. He said um, he, uh, he was also helped by a security guard from a nearby store. Uh, the Utah Gay and, Lesbian, Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce is offering a $5,000 reward for the capture of the suspects. Um, and the four guys who escaped came back to check on him the next day, and he said he's used to being jumped, <laughs> and that he said he was raised to stand up to bullies. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to see if bullies show up at the World Cup, uh, but uh, uh, members of the European Parliament sent World Cup team members rainbow 
shoelaces. Shoelaces. <laughs> Keep your eye on the shoelaces at the World Cup. Meanwhile, we told you and about... make sure you don't get arrested under the, uh, the anti-propaganda laws in Russia. <laughs> yes, where it's being held and where they've set up a hotline for uh, gay fans who are But it's going to be in the next one, the, uh, big one, that the next one that they decided on, which is okay. way down the road, 2026 or something, uh, is going to be in the, uh, the gay kingdom of the United States. Yeah, and you know where it's going to be in 2022? Yeah, cut, cut, cutter. Cutter, yeah. yeah. It's awful. Or it's going to be 5,000 degrees. People are a little upset about that. But we told you last week about the uh, little dust-up over the women's U.S. soccer team wearing pride colored uniforms. Somebody didn't want to do it because uh, uh, she loved the Lord. Exactly right. Uh, uh, occasional team member. Well, now, and the Irish team wore yeah. uh, pride colors in a friendly game with the U.S. men's team. Well, now the U.S. men's team has shown up in pride uniforms. Who it's knew? It's catching. It's shocking. You can see on the right there the guy with the numbers on the back of his uniform in pride colors. Uh, and the whole team was outfitted like that. Don't they respect the flag? <laughs> they were playing. Uh, they have a sort of flag design on the front. And they were playing a, uh, a friendly game against France. So, uh, you know, rainbows are breaking out all over. All right. Uh, shall we? Yeah. Uh, then, the, well, this is not, nothing to be proud of. We're going back and forth on these. At the, at the Stonewall Inn, Stonewall Bar, uh, Lynn Zelvin uh, showed up with her guide dog. She's blind. And uh, there she is with her puppy. And uh, she was refused entrance. Uh, they started asking her all these questions and uh, Show documentation. Us your card, None yeah. of this is legal. Yeah. I mean, she's blind for God's sakes, and they ended up having to go somewhere else. Eventually, management heard about this and apologized and said they would do some training with the bouncers. Yeah. But but it was uh, humiliating. Yeah. Exactly. And there was another, in addition to the uh, attack on the gay men in Salt Lake after the big Pride event there, uh, in New York we have five boroughs and each borough has its own Pride event and the Queen's Pride event was a big event uh, last weekend. But again, a gay man was attacked after the Pride event in Queens. Do we have that video? Yes, local news report. Suspects in a possible bias crime last night after the Queen's Pride Parade. The victim spoke to CBS 2's Allie Bauman. She's live in Jackson Heights with more for us. Allie. Well, Alice and Maurice, the day started out as a celebration of love and pride, but for a school teacher from Queens, it ended with hate and violence. The victim told me he was just about to pick up food here on his way home last night when he was attacked by two strangers, totally unprovoked. Whatever anger they had, they took it out on me. 25-year-old Brandon Soriano has a busted lip and large, raised bruises around his head. He says two men approached him Sunday around 10 p.m. at the corner of 37th Avenue and 83rd Street. One of them yelled an anti-gay slur, then beat Soriano to the ground and knocked him unconscious. I don't know them from a hole in the wall. Never spoke to them before. They just decided they didn't like it. Literally them. said, you. Yeah. Hours earlier, Soriano had been celebrating the Queen's Pride Parade. June is LGBT Pride Month. And then getting your butt kicked. <laughs> For the same reason you went to Pride. It's just, it's crazy. Soriano says the block was bustling that night, and the area usually feels safe. When he regained consciousness, police had arrived, but his attackers were gone. I really do hope they find who attacked my son. If you were to see these guys again, what would you say to them? I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> Across the street walked the other way. Soriano, an elementary school educator, says the attack has not left him angry or scared, rather disillusioned. Homophobia is definitely real and it's annoying. It's very annoying. The NYPD Hate Crime Task Force is investigating. Police have been searching the block for surveillance images, but so far have not released any descriptions for the suspects. We're live in Jackson Heights, Queens. Ali Bauman, CBS 2 News. Now, Jackson Heights is the most diverse neighborhood in the world. About 160 languages spoken there, represented by an out gay man, Danny Drum. But a week after this, uh, on June 8th, a trans woman was stabbed five times by a man. Uh, she is an undocumented sex worker, afraid to go to the police. Uh, there was a march in Jackson Heights just this week to uh, protest that. Uh, and on a much less violent level, an Uber driver in New York City. <laughs> yeah 
kicked a lesbian, a young lesbian couple out of his car because they were kissing. Well, they Very, leaned in when they got in the car and they gave each other a kiss quick. Yeah. And, that, and that was enough for him. And it was, get out of my car. He kept screaming at them, it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so Uber has taken away his uh, ability to be an Uber driver. And the Taxi and Limousine Commission of New York City has now suspended his license. Bullets were dodged in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, they re their pride uh, march received a threat saying, everyone that owns an AK-47 needs to stay on the roof and gun them down and went on and on like this. The FBI is investigating, the police are investigating, but that's uh, scary. Well, better news in Boston, where a uh, hundred mayors came out for Boston Pride, a hundred mayors from around uh, around the country. Uh, they're part of uh, a larger group of mayors around the country sell, uh, supporting LGBTQ issues. In fact, 320 mayors have signed uh, statements supporting gender non-discrimination laws as part of all that. But in Homer, Alaska, the mayor of Homer, was, uh, which is a tiny little town in Alaska, was going to read a <laughs> tiny little town. I uh, was going to read a pride proclamation at the city council meeting. Well, the majority of city council members did not show up so that there would not be a quorum for it. So he read it event. outside. He did. He went outdoors and read it, which uh, is nice. Uh, things didn't go too well in West Hollywood either. Uh, police in riot gear shut down the pride festival because it was oversold and 100,000 people were sent home uh, during a set by uh, Kalani. This is, this is you know. Uh, so this was like the dance on the yeah. pier kind of thing. Yeah, festival. Well, well uh, who knows what we're going to face next year in New York for uh. World for Stonewall 50, coinciding with World Pride, the first time it's shown up in the U.S. But here are the current issues for New York City Pride this uh, month, June 24th. First of all, go to the Dyke March Saturday night, 5 p.m. Bryant Park, much more casual and fun affair without all this policing and corporate. <laughs> There's no corporate support for the Dyke March. Men can watch. I think these days they can even march. I was asked not to march once when I was in it. But that uh, was a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. You know, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the fight continues over the Pride March on Sunday the 24th this year. And the Reclaim Pride Coalition is still working on issues, no wrist, wristbands, moving up the resistance contingent in the parade. I mean, how do you make an angry statement about the state of the country if you're in, stuck in the middle of the parade well, and I specifically I, I, taken off the TV coverage? I would suggest that we march in the other direction and march past, past Trump Tower. I think we should seriously consider that. So to discuss that and all these issues, the Reclaim Pride people are continuing to meet on Saturdays at 1.30 p.m. So they'll be meeting this week, and they'll be meeting Saturday the 23rd, the day before the march, uh, 1.30 p.m. at the LGBT Center, 208 West 13th Street. I highly recommend you get yourself there. But meanwhile, here's, the, here's a sketchy plan. As all these issues are still being negotiated, uh, there's going to be a rump group of the resistance uh, contingent that's going to meet up in front of the SVA Theater on West 23rd between 8th and 9th <laughs> down the block from us. Uh, it'll be convenient. So we're meeting there at 3 o'clock and assembling and uh, going to the march to do sit-ins, to uh, object to the uh, wristbands, to specifically not wear wristbands, to do whatever uh, is decided in these next couple of Saturday meetings about how best to interact with the march. One piece of information I found interesting that I came across this week is that uh, Major League Baseball and the National Football League will have contingents marching in the parade this year. I think it would be appropriate for us to get into the march right in front of the NFL contingent and take a knee. Did you see where Colin Kaepernick is trying to get uh, Trump deposed in, in his suit about Trump colluding with the NFL owners excellent. on this? Excellent, yeah, excellent. That's great. Well, that strikes me as government uh, interference yeah, yeah. with free speech. And by the way, if we sound like troublemakers, 
that's what Stonewall was all about. <laughs> exactly. And I live in fear that they, the Heritage of Pride people, have not made a plan for next year that will, first of all, accommodate the five million people they claim are going to be here. They talk about this silly little route they have this year, this new route, as a test run for next year. It's a terrible route. And doesn't lead us anywhere to like a stage and a rally and a it's gathering like, point for like, millions of like people. It's like going around in a circle. It's crazy. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Other stuff. Well, I mean, horrible decision from the Supreme Court upholding that voter suppression thing in Ohio. Awful. And Awful. this could lead to a lot more. So voting is going to be harder. It's always going to be harder until you get Republicans out of power. Period. Please, please check that you're registered so, to vote. So let's please. maybe maybe we should talk about some of the elections. Sure. Well, uh, the one I like, uh, first of all, is in Lambertville, New Jersey, where lesbian, out lesbian, Julia Fall has been elected as mayor over a 27-year incumbent. Yeah. Congratulations, Julia. And she doesn't look much more than 27. Well, I haven't checked her age. Uh, so. In Wisconsin, uh, Governor Scott Walker didn't want to have a special election for an open state Senate seat. And he was forced to by the courts. And this Democrat won the seat, flipped the seat for a Republican, a swing of 26 points, folks. You know, I mean, they keep saying polls show that, you know, Trump's getting more popular, closing gaps, and other bull. Every special election that's held is a 10 digit at least, excuse me, a, two, a two, double digit uh, swing for the Democrats. Uh, well, the election has not been held yet, but, uh, and, you know, it's a tough one, but uh, the Jim Owls Democratic Club here in New York City. A gay uh, club, LGBT a gay club, club, yeah. Uh, started by Alan Roscoff, longtime activist, has endorsed Cynthia Nixon for governor over Andrew Cuomo, the incumbent. Very brave of them to do so. Yeah. Uh, in Virginia, the Trumpian candidate won the primary uh, for, for U.S. Senate. He's uh, from the far right. His name nightmare. is Corey Stewart. Uh, they think this could hurt uh, Republicans in House races. That's nice. He's This guy's linked to white supremacists. Yes, he is. Big supporter of the Confederate flag. In Nevada, uh, Nelson Arroyo uh, it was, it was nominated by the Democrats to be Secretary of State. He's out gay. Uh, he's looking to flip that seat. He'd be the first out L LGBT statewide official. And in North Dakota, the Democrats nominated Joshua uh, Boshi uh, for Secretary of State. A little tougher there for a Democrat, but he's out. By yeah. the way, in San Francisco, they're still counting the uh, primary election for mayor. Oh, uh, we'd give it to Mark Leno. Yeah, well, we? <laughs> don't be so no, I know. Uh, it's, quick. It's London, a complicated system. London Breed is now leading Mark Leno uh, for that seat, and she's got a lot of support from progressives. It's a ranked voting system. Yeah. Uh, that's, so that's why it's so hard to count. So we may not have a result on that for another week or two. All right. Uh, in other political news, in uh, Michigan, in uh, Novi, Novi, N O V I, the city council has adopted a sexual orientation and gender identity non discrimination bill. This is why it's important to pay attention to who you're voting for everywhere. And Maine has joined California, Oregon, and the District of Columbia in offering non-binary uh, designations of X for driver's licenses and IDs. California's bill to make conversion therapy consumer fraud, which means that it applies to adults as well as uh, to kids as in most mm -hmm. places, advanced in the Senate Judiciary Committee. It's already passed the assembly, but 350 people rallied at the Capitol against it. One pastor said uh, it helped him to change. Uh, Scott Weiner, who's uh, in the Senate, called it psychological torture. Back to Maine, where the town of Kittery, the school board, has adopted pro-trans policies for students there. And in Delaware, the legislature has passed a no conversion therapy for minors bill. I would expect the governor would sign that. And the governor of New Hampshire, Governor Sununu, a Republican, has signed a no conversion therapy for minors bill and a gender identity and expression non-discrimination bill. But in Michigan, did you see where uh, Republican leaders want the attorney general, Bill Schutte, is that his name, uh, to reverse the pro-LGBT ruling from the 
State Human Rights Commission. Very, very. Which interpreted the law to say sex discrimination uh, covers sexual orientation and gender identity. Very strong uh, right wing uh, strain in Michigan that oh, yeah. uh, has been fighting us for in a long New time. In New York, out uh, uh, gay Sean Patrick Maloney has gotten into the attorney, state attorney general's race. He's trying to use money raised for his house race for this, and there's, that, there's a question whether he can do that. It's, well, th it's also, three million bucks. There's also a question about whether his house uh, seat will remain democratic if he uh, oh he has a plan for away. that he says, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Also running are people like Zephyr Teachout and Tish James, who's the public advocate in New York yeah. City. Uh, in uh, Iowa, a court has ruled that uh, Medicaid must cover transition costs yeah, for trans people. That's terrific. That's good. That's terrific. And in Texas, cute story from Texas. Uh, an elementary school there was studying sexism and gender issues. So uh, a, a little boy, an elementary school boy, uh, decided he would wear a dress to school to, you know, talk about gender and a girl, issues. And a girl wore... Uh, Baggy uh, pants. Basketball pants, yeah. Yeah, well, her... Uh, the other students said to the boy, or was it the... Uh, the boy's the one who got in trouble. Yes. Uh, not the I'm girl. trying to figure out whether it was students or the administration who said to him... Oh, the no, it was the administration. Yeah. ...said uh, when he's wearing the dress, uh, take it off. It's disruptive. Don't talk about it. So, a couple of dads who heard about this, uh, dads of the boy, perhaps? Uh, one dad of the boy. It was dads. Yeah. Uh, decided that they were furious that the school would react like this. So they showed up at this school to talk to the principal wearing they're dresses. They're not saying who these people are or where they're from, but they put their, their pictures up. Dallas area. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and the mother of a trans boy at the school spoke up and said how thrilled she was and how grateful that uh, these dads and the kids were supportive of her trans son. And they wanted to talk to the principal and the school did end up apologizing for this discrimination. Yeah. But boys putting on a dress seems to drive people crazy. And then there's the case in uh, Philadelphia at a, uh, of the non... Uh, well, it seems to encompass the whole school system by the time this student got through it. For schools. Right. Uh, her, her name is Amanda Wilby. Uh, at, at every school since elementary school, uh, she was bullied She's for gender, non, gender yeah. nonconformity. Yes. And uh, so the court has awarded her half a million dollars. Uh, now, this is the first time the anti-discrimination statute was used to hold schools accountable for student-on-student -student bullying. Yeah. Uh, and that sets a big precedent. Uh, the schools prohibit sex discrimination. The bullying started for her in 2003. And there was a horrible story that we were following last year, I guess, in L.A., where uh, a... Uh, adorable little boy, Gabriel Fernandez, eight years old, was tortured, tortured repeatedly, and finally by, killed. By the mother's boyfriend. By the mother's boyfriend, with the mother's complicity in some way. She has now been sentenced to life in prison. He, the boyfriend, has been given the death penalty. They still have the death penalty in California. Well, evidently, uh, for this, this case. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, we're not. And social workers in the case were charged with child abuse and falsifying records. It's a terrible, terrible story. All right, we did uh, that. Uh, and in Kansas, a teen was sentenced to juvenile detention in the 2016 killing of a 32-year-old trans woman, Tyrese Walker, will serve time until 22 and a half, 16 at the time of the killing. Um, okay. Uh, Internet, right. uh, yes, international we can, news. We can move on, yes. Unless you have anything well, else. Well, do we talk, we, okay, all right. <laughs> no, I'm, and there know. you go. No, no, I mean, you know, there are other stories. Call me. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to go down the list. Denmark. The government has launched an LGBT action plan with 42 initiatives. And Edmonton. They they had their pride. 30 protesters blocked the pride parade on Canada. Ju this is yeah, and uh, they. 
yes, which is a, um, uh, a you know one of our used to, be, used to be one of our allies, <laughs> and uh, these protesters demanded a halt to police and military in the Pride Parade, uh, coalition of LGBT people of color. The demands were immediately agreed to by the organizers. It's Canada. Now they did keep a uh, all political parties were represented in the parade except the United Conservative Party, which was barred. So they held a pancake breakfast and said everybody's welcome. So they're, they're trying to <laughs> It is them. really that, Canada. Now, these are conservatives in Canada. On the other hand, in Israel, they had, uh, per usual, a huge crowd of 250,000 people at Tel Aviv Pride. Yes. Uh, but LGBT activists blocked the Pride uh, march for a while, complaining about uh, pink washing, the use of, uh, uh, you know, pro-LGBT policies to exonerate Israel from its mistreatment of Palestinians but in that Gaza and the West Bank. But that didn't stop Andy Cohen from speaking. Did he now? Yes. Well, uh, even as Prime Minister Netanyahu was bragging about their pro-LGBT attitudes, the Knesset was rejecting a bill that would have legalized same-sex civil unions. And that was with the collaboration of Netanyahu, Netanyahu's uh, party. Now, a lot of what we talk about on the show is pretty depressing, but we, we cling to the, to, the, to the bright lights that uh, shine around the world. In Poland, they're having 12 LGBT pride marches scheduled this year, and thousands marched in Warsaw, as, did, as they did in Bucharest, Romania, and these are places where it's tough to do. Uh, five of those uh, Polish cities are having a pride for the first time, and uh, one person who was interviewed said, People are fed up. They're organizing, they're resisting, they're just not going to take it anymore. 52 ambassadors signed on in support of the Warsaw Pride. In Barbados, LGBTQ advocates are challenging the ban on same-sex relations in court, and they're using the Inter-American Com Commission on Human Rights, which gave us the great marriage ruling, and they're supported by the Barbados Christian Council. Well, the anti-sodomy, anti-buggery law is so draconian, it, uh, it holds out life in prison as one of the possible uh, punishments My for God. it. My God, Oscar Wilde only got two years hard labor. It was pretty tough. And yeah. He, uh, he almost died. Uh, by the way, you, you mentioned briefly uh, Bucharest pride in Romania. Uh, that was the locus for the decision by the European court last week that... Uh, mandated recognition of marriage uh, by a Romanian and someone from out of the country. So the pride celebration was in part a big celebration right. of that ruling. In the Philippines, a little town of Mandal Uyang, I don't know if it's little, it's a town, uh, they passed an ordinance protecting LGBTQ people from discrimination. And, and I had something else from the Philippines. Which is that a court will hear a marriage equality suit next week on the, the 19th. The Supreme Court is gonna hear it. And, uh, you know... And Duterte says he supports it. Do we want his support? Well, you know. Uh, no, really. I, uh, I, I, want, I want peace with North Korea, but I'd like something <laughs> sincere. Yes, and I'm not sure Duterte is sincere about this. Where is the most distant from us or anywhere almost uh, pride celebration? <sighs> oh, um, I'm... G <laughs> I don't know. And I stumped him. Antarctica, uh, that's where the, that's the McMurdo that. Station is celebrating Pride oh, with music, dancing, games for all. It's going to be dark there for <laughs> Pride, but that's uh, farther away from us than Vietnam I, and places like that. Or I, don't uh, know. I made it up. What okay. do I know? But uh, <laughs> there are 133 staff people staffing the station at uh, McMurdo in Antarctica, and 10 of them are out LGBT. But everybody celebrates Pride in Antarctica. Setbacks in Hong Kong. The yes. co Court of Appeal overturned a landmark ruling that guaranteed health benefits to the husband of a male civil servant, and the government appealed the decision, uh, finding it guilty of indirect discrimination for failing to issue a visa to the spouse of a British lesbian. I know, they're trying to go backwards, and they're going, continuing in to go China. backwards in India, where uh, the very what vanilla movie love simon that uh, yes. the the mainstream movie that was released here to good but, reviews banned banned in india 
Uh, even well, those movies are the most subversive. No sex, no violence. There's a petition about it. There are going to be street protests in Mumbai and Hyderabad. Does it, doesn't Simon even get a kiss? I don't know. I uh, haven't seen it. I've given up on boy movies. A breakthrough at the Catholic World Meeting of Families scheduled for this August uh, in Dublin. Uh, they are, uh, they've been under a lot of pressure, so they finally invited Jesuit James Martin, an editor, an editor at America Magazine, to speak on how parishes can welcome LGBT Catholics and their families. I have a hint for you. They could uh, treat them as equals, but they're not going to. Perhaps the revolution is coming. Uh, uh, I in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we can believe in uh, denuclearization of North Korea. Uh, in Latvia, 8,000 people at Riga Pride, and as the news report said, only one smoke bomb. <sighs> Uh, the UK is seeking to deport Nigerian asylum seeker uh, who was receiving death threats back home. He was fired for being gay in Lagos. And of course, the UK is is pumping up the fact that their their consuls all over the United States are marching with contingents and pride parades. How about taking care of this? And in and in Botswana, uh, they hosted the Pan African LGBTQ conference and included Kasha Jacqueline, who was in uh, who's been a guest on this show. Yes, that's, that's a very brave thing to do over there. Just have Appear a conference. Appear on this show. Just have or? a conference. <laughs> well, maybe people can see us over there in it's Botswana. It's true around the world. Just go to gayusatv.org and you can watch us online anywhere, uh, or listen to us on uh, iTunes. All right. AIDS news. A uh, couple of court decisions. A uh, good one in Sweden and a bad one in Arkansas. Let's start with the bad. Well, I hadn't known that Sweden. Well, that's the good one. All right, so let's do Arkansas. A judge has upheld an HIV criminalization law there, and ruling that you must disclose your HIV positive status. State health department officials testified, saying this is just not current. This isn't how things work. Uh, you know, it's still a class A felony. You can be sentenced to 30 years there. Uh, they ju the judge just rejected the expert testimony. Science. I, hey, bigotry. But Sweden, uh, I didn't know that Sweden was terrible on this issue of yes, HIV criminalization, yes. but their Supreme Court has dismissed a charge of HIV exposure for unprotected sex uh, uh, when you're undetectable uh, and HIV is not transmitted. The court said there's no risk from an adherent person with HIV, a person adherent to their drug regimen. No chance of transmission. But they have a terrible history on this, apparently. And there wasn't transmission in this case, so uh, I'd like them to be a little broader in the decision, but that was a good one yeah. and certainly more enlightened than Arkansas. And Australia has found that the rise of PrEP uh, has reduced HIV rates, of course, but it's also reduced condom use, including among men who are not on PrEP. Is that really a headline? Well. Oh, not on PrEP, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Trump is not going to defend key provisions of the ACA. Uh, they say the individual mandate is unconstitutional. This is going to hurt everybody with a pre and also pre-existing pre conditions. Yeah. This is horrendous, folks. Well, they're talking about Congress uh, fixing this, and there seems to be unanimity. Congress hasn't fixed anything. Well, that's true, but uh, uh, well, we shall see. To quote a famous living and, American. And you know, Trump was going to lower your rates, but I got to notice that my premiums would go up 37% next year on my plan if I weren't going on Medicare, which I am. Lucky you. And me. Uh, all right, entertainment news? Sure. Well, first I want to uh, tell people that in San Francisco on June 20th at the Castro Theater there, uh, the Frameline Awards, that, that's their big, it's the premier uh, LGBT film festival in the U.S., and they'll be giving out their awards, and they will also be doing a tribute to Deborah Chasnoff, the late great uh, filmmaker, the first out lesbian to win a, an Academy Award. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and be out on the Oscar stage. And they're going to be showing her fundamentally important and really magnificent film, It's Elementary, about teaching about LGBTQ issues. Wonderful film. In so moving. Schools. Listening to little kids, the wisdom of little kids talking yep. about gay issues. Really moving. So that's June 20th at the Castro Theater at the Frameline Awards. If okay. you are there, I highly recommend you see that. Uh, let's talk about the Tony Awards. And Why the, not? And the ratings were up this year. There were lots of out gay winners, including the Harry Potter director, I didn't even know he was gay, John Tiffany, 
who uh, made everybody sing happy birthday to his husband. That was horrible. <laughs> that was the low moment at the, uh, you know, talk about coercion. Who does he think he is, Donald Trump? Emotional blackmail. Really? Well, I mean, uh, Very Robert disturbing. De Niro got a standing ovation. Well, yeah, but uh, he wasn't coercing people. <laughs> he said it twice. <laughs> That was we his opinion. We can't say that word on this show. It was his opinion. Some uh, people liked it. Some people hated it. But, but that was, he wasn't demanding that the audience say it with him. No. <laughs> they could have led a chant. That would have been fun. Uh, he could have. And uh, most, uh, Andrew Garfield, who is not gay, won for Best Leading Actor in Angels in America uh, in a play. Uh, he dedicated his award to us in the LGBT community well, who have fought and died to protect humanity and say no to bigotry, shame, and exclusion. exclusion. So he said, so let's just bake a cake for everyone who wants a cake to be baked. He really had a nice little compact uh, message. It was nicer if you actually heard him say well, it. Well, sure, but we can't. Well, the CBS you know, doesn't give us the clips. No, and we can't go on at too much length about it. But I was surprised he had an English accent. That <laughs> came as a big surprise well, to it's me. it's because you've been watching too many Spider-Man movies. Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> uh, Nathan Lane, out gay actor, won for supporting, uh, for playing uh, uh, Roy Cohn, who never came out. And he choked up talking about his husband. I thought that was very moving. I like that. And the director, David Cromer, won, uh, who was the out director of the band's visit, which cleaned up at the Tonys for yeah. Best Musical yeah. and also uh, 10 awards, I think. He spoke up for those who were uh, suicidal. And we're going to talk a little bit about Anthony Bourdain in a minute. And Tony Kushner uh, won, f won for Best Revival of a Play, Angels in America. He reminded us that we have 21 weeks until the midterm elections, 21 weeks to save our democracy and heal our planet. And he wished Judy Garland a happy birthday. <laughs> and reminded people that they have only till July 15th to see this revival of Angels in America. And we could not recommend it more highly. If you have not seen it, especially if you've never seen it, but this is a wonderful production and yes. you would be doing yourself a favor by seeing it. And of course, the other one we think you would be doing yourself a favor to see is Three Tall Women, oh, yeah. where Glenda Jackson finally won a Tony Award and was a little sharp in her reference to Trump and America. I think she did it very uh, elegantly. Very elegant. And I love Laurie Metcalf and I'm not unhappy that she won, but I really was rooting for Denise Goff in I. Angels in America. And I loved, I love Laurie as well, so. Yeah. Uh, but I thought Patty Lupone was just wasted on the show. She got about 10 seconds to say something. I that know. was sort of heartbreaking. Well, speaking of heartbreaking, and we talked about suicide, Anthony Bourdain, uh, who was a strong ally of the LGBT community, he filed uh, the amicus brief with the Chefs for Equality in the Masterpiece Cake Shops uh, case. But this was just someone I loved because he threw himself into cultures all over the world, talked to average people, really, re and humanized people in Iran in Gaza, in all the places America is told to hate. Uh, he went in and talked to people and made us all look at uh, the commonalities that we have. Um, he said the, and he also said the, the restaurant business would collapse without Mexican workers and that he has never had an American kid come in who wants to wash dishes or do prep work or anything like that. And what I loved him for was that he said, uh, uh, once you've been to Cambodia, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. And uh, look what happened to Cambodia. And we have a war criminal living in our midst who was welcome to you know, sh uh, talk it, shows. And is an, uh, picked up as an advisor by Hillary Clinton and, and Trump. And Donald Trump. Uh, if you want more explication of uh, the horrors of uh, Henry Kissinger, find the documentary film. I think it's available on YouTube. The Trials of Henry Kissinger. Well, we, we don't try our war criminals here. We didn't try George Bush for mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, for the you know, uh, the, the, the Middle Eastern wars that he perpetrated. It, it's, you know, we ju and we let these things go, and then we wonder why we have no standards and why somebody like Trump arises. Well, back to the uh, Tonys, uh, you talk about Anthony Bourdain and his humanizing people. One of the nicest aspects of the Tonys was how many winners got up and talked about their 
immigrant status yes. or their family's immigrant status. Tony Shalhoub yeah. uh, for Band's Visit. Many. Who you, and, can't, who you can't see in Band's Visit. He's out of the show. And John Leguizamo, I yes. found very moving in his speech. I really liked what he had to say. Uh, of course, one uh, thing, I, I like the hosts. I thought Josh Groban and Sarah Bareilles did a good job. Very well. So much better than Kevin Spacey last year, <laughs> oh which was a horror what, show. What, an, in, an insult. And, and look a, what happened to him right afterwards. And uh, the thing that everybody mentioned was the Parkland kids singing the oh. song from Rent. Really heart-wrenching and beautiful. I really cried. beautiful. And uh, just a shout out to someone who was a winner who didn't make the broadcast, but out lesbian Sarah Krolwich, a theater photographer for the New York Times, who's been doing it for many years beautifully. and Takes was, great shots. Uh, was given an award for uh, a Tony Honor for Excellence in the Theater. Congratulations the, the to Times, you, Sarah. The Times is very funny. They won't use the production photos that the shows send them. They have to take their own pictures, and that's Sarah Krolwich. Yes, exactly. Uh, all right. Well, I want to alert you to this Sunday. Uh, the, 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 on PBS Masterpiece, they're going to do uh, a man in an orange shirt from Great Britain on PBS, and we have the trailer for it now. Granny, we found it in a cupboard to Flora Michael Thomas. Who's Thomas? Man in an orange shirt. Thomas, stay with me. Thank you. To Flora and Michael. So how well did you know Thomas March? think that we could set up house together like man and wife. Grandpa was gay. Grandpa was gay. Thomas is in prison. He needs you. I worry about you. You are leaving a table of friends. I want you. I don't do casual. I can't share you. I've been ashamed all my life. What were you thinking marrying me? Did you think I'd cure you? Did you even love me? I'm ruined both of them. They hurt you too. That looks like a complicated story it's because it takes place, you've got a gay men in World War II and just after, uh, and this guy, uh, played by James, uh, pl no, I'm not sure, but who falls in love with uh, James McArdle from Angels in America, but marries a woman who grows up to be um, Vanessa Redgrave, Redgrave and uh, ends up having a grandson who's gay, uh, and uh, it's, so it's two. It's two different eras it's of stories. It's two male couples in different eras. Men, uh, men, men. Yes, and British, British, British. Now, uh, <laughs> PBS is also showing the day after on Monday, the 18th, something called "Coming Out: A 50-Year History." Uh, that uh, I saw a trailer for that. It's, uh, it's Hosted by Jazz Jennings. Yes. Uh, the transgender young yeah, person. Yeah. And uh, where are we in this list? Uh, we well, we've got Chase. Oh, another uh, another British event. And this is pretty stunning. Uh, a male ballet dancer has decided that he wants to dance with the women's part of the ballet company. He has dieted heavily to achieve the body type of uh, a woman in ballet. You want to put that picture up? Chase Johnsy is his name. And in the, woman, he, in the he, woman's costume there. And he is dancing uh, with the English National Ballet in Sleeping Beauty and other productions, and this is considered quite revolutionary for him. He's integrating the uh, women's part of the company, but doing it uh, in a, a sort of women's configuration. 
I saw a very timely play this week, Romulus the Great by Friedrich Durenbott. It's, I think think it's very a, timely. Well, it, 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 it's a rare revival. This is the same guy who wrote The Visit. This is being revived by the Yangtze Repertory Theater and directed by Chang Ren Fan. Um, they're really giving it a first class production. Um, here's a line from the play by the, it's about the emperor of Rome, the last emperor of Rome who wants Rome to pay for its sins by bringing it down. So he's just very passively letting everything fall apart. But he says, if you want to make a great scandal, better to stage a little one. So there are all these lines that make us think of today. And he's not a Trumpian character, but it makes you think about the way things are falling apart here. But with Durenmouth, there's always twists and turns and things. So it's, uh, I think it's a first class production. Uh, but um, as I said, it has these twists. It's a very fine ensemble. I do hope that uh, some of the actors work on getting uh, the words out more. I'm not talking about projection here, but it's very complicated dialogue, and it's farce, and it's serious, so get the words out. Uh, Netflix is running a sort of quirky gay teen comedy called Comedy? Alex Strangelove? Yes. You've seen it. I loved it. All right. Well, I then, was... should we look at the trailer, yes. and then you tell us about sure. it? Sure. Okay. The Golgi apparatus. The most amazing thing about this is Alex True Love is going to have sex next week. Huh? Hot, sweaty, intercourse of a sexual kind. Oh. My name is Alex True Love. Yes, that's my real name. I have a 4.0 GPA, I'm student body president, and I have a great girlfriend. You're coming with us to this party, and you're going to let your little constipated hair down and enjoy yourself. Come on, join the cool kids. I think we're here to corrupt you, Alex. So I have a girlfriend. I know. She's adorable. She is. There's this guy who I'm pretty sure has a crush on me, and I guess I'm not repulsed by the idea. Look, it's a confusing time, man. Oh. Everywhere you look, someone's omnisexual or transitioning. How did you like, know you were gay? How do you know you're straight? What's going on? I've been trying to de-virginize you for the past eight months and you won't let me. It's like Mad Max out here. Guys doing guys, girls doing girls, girls turning into guys and doing girls that used to do girls and guys. Ah! I'm over it, though. This whole thing, sex, love, I'm out. Can someone please explain modern high school boys to me? What are you so scared of? Love is strange. This is written and directed by Craig Johnson, who says it's semi-autobiographical, and it's a great ensemble of young performers. And so, uh, it, you know, it's it's odd because it's about a sort of a class president, high achieving, uh, has a girlfriend, and you know, she's like, "When are we going to do it?" You know, that kind of that's kind of the beginning of the plot, and it's him coming into. Now they're in Westchester. She is saying, "How can you not be figuring out in this day and age the, what, what's going I on?" I know, but it it works. I think it works. Well. Well, I think what works is my favorite show, which has just returned, Claws, <laughs> Niecy Nash, with a gang of manicurists and the Russian mob and a lot of other stuff. And one of the manicurists is a great lesbian character. Uh, Claws is back. But, uh, you know, watch the first season on demand first, because then you'll get the plot. Okay. And congratulations to Afterglow, a little off-Broadway play about open gay relationships and whether they work or not. They just celebrated their one-year anniversary. There's the shower scene. Uh, there's a lot of flesh in there, but there's, a, there's also a lot of good, interesting plot to Afterglow. Do we have any comment about Pose in its second uh, episode, or are we going to leave it Alone well, for a while. I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of was very put off by a scene that they shot in Julius's bar, which they called something else. They called it the Boy Lounge. Uh, you know, uh, 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 people discriminating against transgender people, and, and I'm sure it was thirty I guess, years ago. Yes, of course that, of course it goes on, and it can go on. Yeah. But I thought it was, ha I thought it was sort of ham-handed the way they did it. Well, the show is still finding its legs, I think. Uh, but uh, we have fallen off of ours. The show is over and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us here at Gay USA. Go to GayUSATV.org to get on our mailing list and get our weekly show notes. See you next week. Bye.